people keep asking, why jellyfish? How's my off season? But just trying to get some jellyfish. Where do you acquire the jellyfish? Are they being shipped in or can you yeah. just like go just down to PetSmart? Go on, uh, like some site on the internet and order them. <laughs> Jellyfish.com. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Wait, you're actually doing jellyfish? Yeah. I feel like jellyfish is a nice home decor. The Jellyfish Chronicles. It's a season subplot that even I didn't expect. But in a year loaded with adversity, it's good to take a moment and just flow. Go ahead, help me clean your tank real quick. Yeah, let's do it. I'm nervous. This is the most nerve-wracking part of this tank. Getting all of that material at the bottom. The whole, like you gotta scrub the every single surface. Front, back, the bottom, even the, the curves too, because you'll notice the tanks are actually curved. Because they can't be in a square. Yeah, both they're, they're, the corners. Yeah. And it'll basically kill them. And that's one that's one of the first things I learned. How this all came about was I kinda wonder if I could have jellyfish as pet. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Everybody got all these saltwater tanks with fish, eels, and stuff like that. Yep. Like, I kinda want jellyfish. It's different. It'd, I think it'd be a nice home decor. And sure enough, you can have one. I'm like, I'm about to buy one. But it's worth it too, because they're they're beautiful. They're, there's nothing like them. Which reminds me, we actually have something for you. Ooh, I'm, I'm all set now. Y'all will see the tank set up in the next six weeks with the jellyfish inside. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Purple's really cool too. Hey, that's my favorite color right here. I think that's what color I would have in my tank. Purple. Yeah. I would do that too. Dang. Yes. Man, they really lit up. Yes, like, yeah. look at that. You know, that's pretty cool. Scuba Santa. All I want for Christmas is for him to bring me three healthy jellyfish. Hey, Scuba Santa, we have a special friend for the K-4 <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? I need to talk to you. I got one wish for Christmas. I want you to bring me three healthy jellyfish. I don't, want, I don't want to do nothing with no sharks, no fish. I just want jellyfish. Appreciate you, boss. Hey, good job. Jake continues to prove his worth. He's setting records, winning games, and he's making a name for himself. Did you ever think, man, I am never going to get my shot? You kind of got to keep the faith that something's going to shake out, something's going to happen if you just keep at it long enough. And fortunately, it did. Browning throws it deep downfield for Chase. Over the shoulder catch. He's off to the races. Look out. Escapes the sack. Quarterback sneak. Browning surging forward. Got the ball over the goal line for the touchdown. Having that perspective of down the road, some point football's going to be over and be able to look in the mirror and say, okay, I, I went through the thick of it. I kept my head down and kept working at it. And... Whether it worked out or not, like at least I got that peace of mind. Has, have you been even remotely surprised at what you've done? Passer rating of 117 in these two games? I've always thought I was pretty good, had a lot of confidence in myself. I've had a lot of reps against our defense and scout team periods where, you know, I've kind of had numbers like that, getting that first Really that first touchdown drive in Jacksonville and then kind of felt like, all right, this is what that's supposed to feel like. He fires over the middle, it's caught. Hudson gets away from a tackle. Here's another one, pass is complete. They give it to Mixon, lowers the shoulder pads. He's into the end zone, touchdown. Kind of know that I'm on a good team. We got a good defense, got a good old line, good receivers, there's some parts around me where if I just do my job, we're gonna be able to put up some points and I think the less I think about all the different things that could happen, just go play, play fast. While the world's getting familiar with who Jake is, the kids at the Boys and Girls Club are happy to see him back for another visit. Kevin has right You're a regular here, huh? Yeah. Is this the spot? Yeah. It's very entertaining. Yeah. Never a dull day. It kind of went back to once I took over the starting role, I came and one of the kids was like, man, I thought you never came back here. And I was like, well, now I have to go every week because it's, uh, you know, I think if you're going to do something, do it consistently. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Browning, um, quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. Do you got a question? Your last name, Browning? I mean, I think I'm older, so I had it first. Can I do the gritty? It's not really in my uh, area of expertise. Hey, right, let's get in the line. Heads up. <laughs> it's coming in hot. Three for three. Everybody watch out. Everybody watch out. Here comes Zay. I think he's made like 12 in a row. 
All right, you got to back up to the gray line. You're too good. Give him a little space. Woo! Dot. Okay. Woo! Woo! How much can you lift? Not enough. What's up, man? You made it. 300? Probably not. I like Cincinnati. It's, you know, I came here, I'd never been here. And, uh, you know, the few people I do get to meet and interact with. Coming from the West Coast, it's nice to feel the Midwest vibes a little bit. <laughs> Week 13 in Jacksonville, Coach Taylor said it best. You came out here and you showed the world, we're still alive, baby. Yes, sir. We're still alive, don't doubt us. In week 14, we have another tough team out of the ASC South. It's one thing to prove that we can still compete. It's another thing to win back-to-back -back games against playoff-worthy teams. With our, our backs against the wall a little bit, I think we're gonna see their best this week. Thinking about it makes me excited, you know, to take the field with these guys. Still a long way to go, just taking it one week at a time, but I think we showed, you know, showed the league on Monday that we're not just gonna, you know, we're not just gonna fold. We got the right type of guys. There's definitely room to improve and get better, man. That's obviously what we come to do, come to work, man, each and every day. I gotta take advantage of the calls what's in front of us. Um, just execute, man. You kinda gotta be ready to adapt and adjust, and that happens to the best of the best. We have everything in front of us still. It's going to come down to December football like it always does in this league. I have every expectation to win every game that I play in. It is a chilly December day here in Cincinnati. 37 degrees. In other words, football weather. Think about this one game, though. Whatever we got to do for both quarters now. Hey, fam, open one, two, three. Yeah. Field position. It's going to be a big deal. Long field, short field, turnover. That's the kind of game it's going to be. Y'all know where we at. In the jungle, baby. Stay tuned. Sit back and enjoy the show. Think of win on the way. Come on, man. With the injury, Anthony Richardson, Gardner Minshew lost his first three. He's now won four straight games. So this game is gigantic for both teams. The 6-6 six and six Bengals look to stay alive in the playoff hunt as they host the 7-5 and five Indianapolis Colts. Zach Moss is in the backfield. Here comes the pressure. Minshew is in trouble. And he's going down. Trey Hendrickson came into the game with 11 and a half sacks. That's at least a half. Minshew trying to hear over the crowd noise. On third and eight, he's back to throw. He pump fakes, starts scrambling, throws high, and it's incomplete. And Trey Hendrickson putting the heat on Gardner Minshew. Let's go! And everybody talked about how good this wide receiver room is. It's one of the best in the NFL. You talk about those reads, and that play wanted to read faster. Chase goes in orbit motion. Browning looking, throws over the middle, caught by Boyd, fakes a defender, and runs out to the 25-yard line. A 17-yard gain. Here's a handoff to Mixon. Runs off the left side, just outside the hash marks, and picks up seven out to the 32. Browning dumps it off underneath. He's got Chase Brown. He's the speedster. He's got daylight inside the 30. One man to beat. All sorts of running room. And blockers in front. He's flying to the 30, the 20, the 10. Cuts back. Makes a man miss at the five. Touchdown, Bengals. Oh, that's who I'm talking about. Minshew catches the shotgun snap. Now he's going to run, and he gets pulled down by the legs at the line of scrimmage by Jermaine Pratt. 61 straight inside 40 yards for Gay. Good hold, but it's a uh, no good. Oh my! Plenty of length. He just didn't have the direction. Hey, miss some money on the floor. Hey, playing up. Joe Mixon back in at running back. Charlie Jones in at wide receiver. Browning throws. It's a screen caught by Mixon. Runs to the 50. Cutting back to the 40. Still running at the 30. High stepping to the 20. And tackled at the 16-yard line. 
The screen game is killing Indianapolis. That's a 44-yard game. If you are a running back and you can catch the ball well out of the backfield, and his catch to run transition is phenomenal. He has to twist around, catch the ball, and then have the vision to find where the holes are going to be up the field. And that stiff arm was brutal. Mixon shifts to his left. It's a handoff. Mixon stumbling forward. Touchdown! Team-nothing Cincinnati with 10-18 to play. Four straight games with a touchdown for Joe Mixon. Hey! Hey, let's go! Come on! I start against the Colts as one of the best this year. But even when you look like you're in total control, you can't ever let up. Because within the blink of an eye, the game can look very different. Back in Cincinnati, we got fourth down and less than a yard. They can get a first down, the Colts. Hey, y'all better take this field goal. Off the play fake, Minshew to back of the end zone. Mo Alley Cox has got it. Touchdown, Colts. The clock running at 142 left in the half. Second and four, they snap it to Browning. Jake looking, throwing, and it is intercepted. It's being run back by Ronnie Harrison. He's going to take it to the house. A pick six and a touchdown for Indy. How about the Indianapolis Colts? They've got three return interceptions for touchdowns now. Unbelievable. The Colts will line up and go for two. Minshew throws it left and it is caught by Pittman. Running along the back line of the end zone. Got a step on Dax Hill and the Colts have tied the score at 14. For a lot of teams, losing the lead like that would be devastating. But for our locker room, we always look forward. And for the second half of this game, we would never look back. Here's T. Higgins, middle of the field. He's got a first down and more. And he's inside Indianapolis territory. And off the play fake to Mixon. Browning to throw again to the sidelines. Chase, he's got it. He's in front of his man. And he's got another first down. Jalen Jones in on the coverage. And now Mixon trying to get to the edge. Mixon does get to the edge. And he stumbles inside the 20. Darrell Baker was one-on-one -on -one against him. Browning has the ball. He's back to throw. He fires. Caught at the five. Tanner Hudson into the end zone. Touchdown. Bengals. Tanner Hudson with his first ever NFL touchdown catch. See you here. Here we go. Late, Minshew trying to get Pittman incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Well, for the second week in a row, the Bengals gave up two scores and they showed resiliency. Instead of collapsing, Tanner Hudson was involved in the pick six. Since that, he's caught a touchdown. Big third down reception here to keep the drive alive. Browning moves under center. He has Mixon five yards behind him. Browning will try to sneak it in. Mixon shoves him in the back into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. And Cincinnati has a two TD lead. Oh, yeah. Second down, Browning, quick hitch to the right, now rolls the pocket to his left. There's not much there, he's just gonna try to get some yards. So it's 45. Veteran type play though. And the medical staff's going to have to come out and take a look. Now Jake Browning is gonna have to check out at least one time, so A.J. McCarron's gonna come in to be the quarterback. Sure, sure. McKenzie calls for the fair catch. Sure. He runs into his own man, he fumbled the football! DJ Ivy fell on top of it. His own man was in the neighborhood. Hey, we score here for a lead now. Remember, it's going down the field. Let's go get it. Third down and eight from the Indianapolis 10. McCarron catches the shotgun snap. He'll float it toward the back left corner of the end zone. T. Higgins makes the catch. There's a penalty flag down in the end zone. Offensive pass interference called on hey. T. Higgins. They ain't got no choice but to call offense. Yeah, huh? They don't like big receivers catching touchdowns and ends on the thing. They don't like that. Come on. Let's go hunt. Let's go. Hey, let's go hunt. Come on. <laughs> we all over it. Go, Mike. We all over it. Go ahead, Cam. Go, go, go. 
You got lucky. The Colts at their own 41. Minshew back to throw here. Finish, comes Henderson. Yeah, He's got him. Yeah. He sacks him. Next to Minshew. Pittman motions out to the left side. Outside the new Minshew back to throw. Looking left. Hit from behind by Hendrickson. The ball flutters to the ground. And the Bengals have it. And that should be Coffindale. Bam! 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 Oh! Two weeks ago, after a loss dropped their record to five and six, many people gave up the Cincinnati Bengals for dead. Well, guess what? The Bengals improved their playoff chances as they climb above 500 with a 34 to 14 win over the Indianapolis Colts. Hey, all we can do is take this thing one game at a time, and that's exactly what you've done. The floor will be the same as it was last week, okay? So it's far off. Get your left hand. We'll see you at 1 o'clock on Tuesday. Go ahead, Tanner. Tanner! Here we go. Who they? Who they? Who they say gonna beat the Bengals? Who they? Who they? Who they say gonna beat the Bengals? No! Everyone knows Ted Karras has a positive infectious personality. So it comes as no shock that our Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee will visit hospital patients who could use some of Ted's holiday cheer. Good to hey guys, see you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for oh, coming. thank you. It's yeah. Awesome. Hey, it's great to meet you. I got you a gift. Do you know about the Cincy hat? It's just a, a hat we made up for charity and it helps house adults with Down syndrome and autism. We build apartments for them, so. Hi, Renee. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Congratulations. Thank you. Man of the oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. Brought you a gift. Oh, I'm going to raise you. I'm going to lose it when I get home. Why are you going to lose it? My He's going to take it. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry? Yeah. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Ted Karras. My pleasure. Good to meet you. Went to the very first Bengal game ever. Wow, 1968? Uh, that's right, at Nippert Stadium. Wow. Okay. Fun, fun. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, yeah. What's up, guys? How we doing? Hi, Wayne. Hi, I'm Ted. Good to meet you. Got some hats for you guys. Wayne? Thank you. Good to meet you, Rusty. How you doing? Good, how are you? Who day? There we go. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you guys. You know, leadership can be found in anyone, but there's not quite anyone who does it like Ted. Missing time because of injuries isn't how anyone wants to go through a season, but it's good to remember when life serves you lemons, make tea. That whole route hurt. Oh, you did it the play before that. I think I did it the very first play I caught. They hit me. Things are definitely, you know, definitely feel like things are starting to click. Um, obviously, there's a lot more work to be done, but right now, I mean, I feel good where we are as a team. We just got to keep playing how we've been playing and keep stacking these Ws. My presence on the field, uh, you know, helps the offense in a way like they can't just, you know, focus on one guy or two guys at receivers. You gotta focus on three. Definitely feel like my presence on the field helps the team a lot. Wait, wait, sound and speed. Is that right? Sound and speed. Action. Millions on my mind. We still perform when it's over time. When the game is on, yes, do it die. See it in my eyes, yeah, I'm energized. And he gets right, I ain't nothing like all these other guys, not a fair fight. I ain't ill-advised, want a prize right. I'ma get mine, let the beast fry, say yeah. That's the things that T. Higgins can do, and that's what they've been missing on the field for the last several weeks. 
T is extremely flexible because of his football IQ and he understands the whole offense, so he's easy to move around. He obviously is an enormous part of what we do and feel like he really rises to the occasion, you know, when his number is called. Just trying to finish out the season as strong as possible with the team. Uh, well, the regular season and make a, make a playoff run and try to obviously get back to where we was two years ago, which is obviously the ultimate goal, the Super Bowl. Oh, it's coming up. Oh, s***. Hot as I told you yesterday and today. I don't want to hear none of that. I got these Dion's on. It hurt, huh? Fast and Furious is not even Fast and Furious anymore. JB! For me to change cleats, I gotta have a bad first half. <laughs> Not like that, though. So I have one or two drops. Yeah. I'm switching. Gloves and cleats. Let's we'll see some jellyfish. Oh. I'm up in the way. Oh. Yeah. Dying. Okay, Stan. Appreciate you. Yeah, Louis Italian. Hey, do you think Lou is Italian? Lou Anarumo, that's the most Italian name yeah. ever. Yeah. He's in the mob. Hey, ah! Uh. How we looking now? I got a question. Are you Italian? Yeah. Come on, do you know that? <laughs> hey, told you. I don't know why they be waking me up. See what? But you play how many years in the league? And you and you won the Super Bowl, huh? Me. Hey. We opened our 2021 Super Bowl run with an instant classic against the Minnesota Vikings. We came back from 14 points down, and Money Mac kicked the game winner in overtime. For Jake, his history with the Vikings goes back further than 2021. And because of that history, his motivation to win this game was stronger than any of us realized. And I think in three preseasons in Minnesota, I've, I've played like a total of like three or four quarters of football. And so I just hadn't really played in a long time. And so you go through basically three off seasons of going into camp knowing that this guy needs to lose the job in order for you to get it. And then all three of them, you know, they don't lose it. And they tell you, hey, you had a great camp. You're, you're continuing to get better. It's very positive. And, you know, you're getting cut at the end of August. Being in the room, you know, I, I made sure that I got the most out of the situation I was in. You know, I, I wouldn't wish four years of no football on anybody, but uh, didn't really see an alternative that, you know, I'd be 50 years old with kids and kind of look in the mirror and be like, man, I just basically quit on myself and didn't double down on it. And I think, you know, that, that would be a hard reality to be able to cope with. Everyone's got a lot to play for. And I think ultimately we're in a position, Minnesota, I think is in a position where just, just keep controlling what you can control and good things will happen. Got a little bit more fighting to do, but same vibes in the locker rooms it was the past two years. We just got to keep going and keep fighting and keep playing Bengal football. It's critical in a, in a December game like this with a team um, coming on the road against us that I, I do challenge our fans to, you know, to drink one more drink and rush in the stadium and, and be as loud as you can humanly possibly be. Minnesota's here. Let's make it a real problem for them. While the jungle began to fill, the Tri-State Warbird Museum prepared an old relic of the past before one of the most iconic parts of game day. I am the collections manager and museum attendant here at the Tri-State Warbird Museum. What's so important about this museum? It tells a history of World War II. It's a history of heroes. I'm standing in front of the, uh, the B-25 here at the museum. This is a twin-engine medium bomber used by the U.S. military during World War II. I've been flying the B-25 since 2019, and doing a flyover for the Bengals is really cool because you know, we watch them every Sunday, and it's nice to keep the old airplanes flying so everybody in town can see them. The last time we flew over the Bengals game in this airplane, they played the Vikings, and we beat the Vikings. So we're gonna fly over today, and we're gonna get a win. And it's gonna be a big hoo day from everybody inside the airplane. So much on the line for Zach Taylor and the Bengals, playing for their postseason lives. Nearly 40% of the AFC has a record of 7 and 6. Man, it's football, man. In the jungle. Where else would you rather be? Let's do it. We got another opportunity to take a step forward today and lay it in our way. Let's go do the free throw at home and turn this up. Let's well, tap out. Chase is on three. One, two, three. Chase. Ah. Two teams right in the thick of the playoff hunt. That makes today's home game critical. 
So out comes 28-year-old Nick Mullins, who is making his first NFL start in nearly exactly two years. On first and 10, play action fake and a deep drop. Here's a throw over the middle. Mullins delivers, and it is a strike. And there is Jefferson. Bengals trying to dial something up here on third and short. Play action fake and a rollout. Here's a pass caught by Ty Chandler. Wide open. He's got some space. And he's tackled short of the goal line by Jermaine Pratt. And the Vikings have the ball all the way inside the one yard line. On first and goal from the one. It's a handoff to Chandler. Spins and he is in. So the Vikings have their first opening drive touchdown of the season. Boy, they came, uh, came out ready to play offensively. Well, what a drive by the Minnesota Vikings and Nick Mullins in his first start this season. Hey, that's the kind of game it's gonna be. That's the kind of game it's gonna be. Uh -huh. And the Bengals' second drive will start for the 25-yard line. Chase Brown, he's gonna get it on the screen. He's got some space, that could be trouble. And Evans gets him out of bounds after a nice game. Seven defenders right up over the ball. Quick throw out to Chase, and he gets nailed immediately for a loss on the play. Browning drops back to throw. Scanning the field, his pass incomplete in the direction of T. Higgins. Brad Robbins into punt. Three and out. It's frustrating when your side of the ball starts the game slow. But given some time, we knew our offense would find the rhythm. We just needed the defense to deliver some stops. They're going to try and stop a Minnesota offense which moved 75 yards in its opening drive under Nick Mullins. Big play here, third down and seven. Bengals blitzing. Mullins gets dropped. Jermaine Pratt got there first. Trey Hendrickson moments later. Vikings four of five on third down conversions today. Mullins throws it across the middle and the ball is picked off by Hilton. Mike Hilton keeps points off the board for the Bengals D. Y'all yeah. know I'm f***ing best. I told you there's a whole lot of money left. There's a whole lot of left. Do it, boy. We need some money though. Do it, baby. On second and 10, Browning against the four-man rush, begins scrambling left, he's in trouble, and he gets sacked for a huge loss. Way back at the 20-yard line, he was lifted off the ground and driven into the turf. Vikings with the lead, they're about to get the ball after a sack and a stop. 133 left in the half. They do get the ball at the beginning of the second half as well. Mullins ready for the shotgun snap. He has the ball, looking. Down the middle of the field for Addison. He's got him inside Bengals territory, inside the 30, and the little man muscles his way down to the 25. Bengals have to keep the Vikings out of the end zone here. 41 seconds left in the half, second down and one. He's pressured, and he's going to get dropped. Miles Murphy, the first round pick out of Clemson, and the Vikings are going to take their final timeout. Bengals will bring their dime defense on the field. Third down and seven at the Cincinnati 22. Mullins pressured again, and he gets dropped by B.J. Hill. Did he lose the ball on top of it? The ball comes out, and the Bengals recover with 20 seconds left in the half. It's an interception. Nick Mullen didn't realize he threw it right into B.J. Hill, who caught it. Another pick is crazy. We got a game to finish. We got a game to finish. Go get another one. Vikings will start with the ball at their own seven. And we'll see how the defense performed to begin the third quarter. They hand it off. Chandler running right, crosses the 10. Good cut, bounces outside. Mullins throws and connects with Justin Jefferson. They're in Bengals territory at the 49-yard line. Looking left, throwing left, and connecting. Third down and nine from the Cincinnati 38. Mullins in trouble, throws. Caught by Addison, nobody left to tackle him. He will streak down the field and go into the end zone. So now if you're Jake Browning, he hasn't faced a ton of double-digit deficits in his life, what's the mentality? Be smart with the football. There's still plenty of time in this second half. So now up to Jake Browning to respond. Browning is back to throw. Throws it left. It is intercepted. The zone defense does the job. The Vikings have their first takeaway of the day. With the Vikings lead extended to 14, this game was starting to look very familiar. But we wanted to have the same result as 2021. Individuals would need to step up and make big plays. And the Minnesota Vikings have taken a 17 to three lead. They ain't never over, man. They ain't over. We gotta take that field now. Come on, man.
Bengals trail the Minnesota Vikings 17-3 in a game the Bengals badly need to win. Don't try to make it into hero ball. Jake Browning, one thing that he will always do, maintain his poise. On first and 10, Browning is going to fire. It is caught for a first down by Tanner Hudson. There's Browning, hits Irv Smith, the former Viking. Gets it inside the 35. 43 seconds left in the third quarter. The Bengals need a touchdown. They're down by 14 points. Browning, there's Chase inside the red zone and inside the 15. What? Joe Mixon in the backfield. Browning looks, throws to the end zone, and it's touchdown! Cincinnati! Ah! Take it to the house. T. Higgins. Boy, let's go! Told you that. Yes, sir. Told you that. Yes, sir. <laughs> that was a. I seen it on TikTok. Now we turn the up slow. Let's go. A six. This out, man. Good job. And a rumo and O'Connell going head to head on this drive. You can barely hear yourself think. Third down and eight. And the Vikings do not get the snap off on time. And a delay of game. And you can credit the Bengals fans for that one. This crowd is going absolutely insane. And if you're the Vikings, do you trust Mullins, who has turned it over twice? Third and 13. Hawkinson hammered at the 29-yard line by Logan Wilson. It is punt time for Minnesota as the Bengals D does its job. Tell us about the play. Right, man. Nixon gets a block on the edge. Gets it into Minnesota territory before being pushed out of bounds. Browning fires it to the middle. Higgins inside the 35. And even on Saturday, you can always have a tee time. Fires downfield. Caught by Chase. He's got a first down. Jake Browning putting it right on the money. Too much ground to cover. Browning made him pay. Everybody bunched in tight. They hand it to Mixon. He gets hit. Tries to get in. A double effort. And does. The second effort gives the Bengals the touchdown. Jake Browning calls Joe Mixon the tone setter. And boy, did he set it there. Oh, man. Tell him to feed you that That's all day, man. It's up to Nick Mullins. See what he has in his bag of tricks. First and goal from the one. Mullins standing, now rolling to the right, being chased toward the sideline. Throws it back across his body. It's caught by Addison for a touchdown. And the Vikings have the lead with 3.48 to go. Bengals down seven with the ball. 90 seconds to go here in Cincinnati. Big play coming up, second down and seven. Browning hits Higgins down inside the 35. 48 seconds left in regulation. For this Vikings defense, you got to look at it as well and say, hey, I'm not going to allow T. Higgins to be the one to win this game for the Cincinnati Bengals. Browning looking. Pressure throws it deep. And the ball is caught by T. Higgins at the one yard line. Wins the jump ball. It's a touchdown. An incredible catch by T. Higgins. And the Bengals have scored with 39 seconds to go. I can't believe what T. Higgins just did. And we are headed to overtime, tied up at 24. How will it play out this afternoon with so much on the line? Third and inches for Mullins. That's Powell behind him. They get a push. I don't know, he got turned sideways. Where's that football? It is short. Mullins will be under center. Chandler lined up behind him. The Vikings try the push. The Bengals appear to have stopped it. Cincinnati got a great surge up front. And Mullins does not get there. A second shove doesn't get it done. The Bengals will take over at their own 42-yard line. Lou Anarumo fired up. His defense comes through. Vikings showing pressure, here comes the blitz. Browning looking, scrambling to the right. Browning throwing downfield, it is caught! Just ripped the Vikings' heart out. And now they are well within the field goal range of Evan McPherson. Looking for the seventh walk-off field goal of his NFL career. And his second in a span of three weeks. The snap's good, the hold is good, and the Bengals have come back to beat the Vikings in overtime. Three straight wins engineered by
by Jake Browning. Should've never got me! What did we say at halftime? Don't care what the score is, just find a way to get the win. And you guys found a way to come through at the end. Who they? Who they? Who they say gonna beat them Bengals? Who they? Who they? Who they say gonna beat them Bengals? No! Jake Browning's helmet from this past game. Uh, slammed it on, I think, was the bench. So we got a couple, you can see, smashed that up pretty good. Took out a nice size gash here in the top as well. So obviously we want to swap out the shell, which make it look better for the next game so it doesn't look as uh, beat up and nicked up. So uh, from the video we all saw was happened post game after he spiked it on the bench and yelled his phrase. So yeah, that's, uh, that's when it happened.